I'm Robert Cavuto, and today on Sonic Perspectives, I'm speaking with Jeff Keith of Tesla to talk about the release of their new live album, Full Throttle Live, that came out in May and was recorded at the Full Throttle Saloon in Sturgis last August. Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time, and it's a pleasure to speak with you again. Absolutely, buddy. Uh, we spoke in 2020 for the Five Man Jam in London release, so it's a pleasure oh, to speak with you nice. again. Nice. Yep. So, nice. Yeah. And I love the new album. Thank you. Hey, well, now see, I don't keep, you know, I'm just the guy they end my phone to, you know, that and they, you know, they give me music and I take a pencil and paper and write a melody of words, but really, I think it's already been released yes. and it was recorded when we played the Full Throttle Saloon, which is not a saloon anymore. It's now an outdoor thing, sort of like Buffalo Chip. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And and we were, we happened to record that show and... You know, the guys went, you know what, sounds good, we should release and release this and that. So, yeah, so it's called Full Throttle Live. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm digging it, you know, and uh, yes, you're right, it was it was recorded at Sturgis, right, last August, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yes, yes. Good, good yeah. And my question, my first question, I'll lead off to you guys, did you have the preconceived idea to record this show and make an album from it? Or do you typically record all your shows and wait for a really good one that's recorded to put out? No, you know what it is? Uh, in all honesty, Robert, we, because of technology, today's technology, we record every show every night. Wow. No matter if we're playing, never mind, we're going to put a record out, whatever. We record every night in case there's some kind of problem or issue or uh, just didn't, it's, it's too easy just to get the laptop to record the whole show. However they do it, I don't know. But they, the guys decided, hey man, we can put out a new release uh, and, and, and have, I think, it, is it Lazy Days, Crazy Nights, or Miles Away is the, is the single? Miles Away. Miles Away, and we also covered SOS Too Bad by Aerosmith. Yes. Yeah. It was a great, yeah, and I, I was gonna, I was wondering with Miles Away, um, because it leads it off, the album off, and it's the lead single, video and musical song. It's a powerful song from 2004 off Into the Now. Yeah. Did you think that song never got the attention and recognition well, it deserved? I, well, I know because, see, we got together back in 2000, and we started doing shows going, hey, let's commit to that. Next, you know, we said, hey, it's time to commit to making a record up at a, next to a bowling alley in Paul Pines. That, that Frank had a little studio. Mm -hmm. uh, our guy Marco came in and he floated all the floors, made what do you call it, ISO booths and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we wrote, produced, uh, did everything and, and mixed it. Of course, I'm the kind of guy they just get me out of the the, the main room there and go, Jeff, we were trying to mix a record here. And I just walk out. And then they go, Jeff, you don't have to leave. And I go, yes, I do, because I don't know how to shut up. So at any rate, wrote, pre-produced it, pre-production, uh, recorded it, mixed it. Them guys did it all. I say them guys because all I do is sing on the thing and write words. But we did that at next to a bowling alley in Pollock Pines and released it ourselves. And so, yes, it never got, it never got around like, you know, like even forevermore or bust a nut or especially psychotic supper, five man acoustical jam, great radio. And that was with Jeff. And so, yeah, it never got the push. That's probably why we're releasing it now because it never got a push. It's a great song. It really is. It's a real powerful song to start off a live album and a show with. It is a great song. And you know what? Into Now is one of my favorite records, but it was very done Little League. Yep. Yeah. I get it. I get it. You know, yeah. as I mentioned earlier, um, Miles Away is the video single, not only the musical single. Did you okay. videotape the whole show at uh, the Full Throttle Saloon? You know what? I'm the wrong guy to ask. More than likely, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, they keep you in the dark on that one, so you don't freak out if you're being recorded, right? <laughs> I haven't seen. I, I, you know what? I don't like to even know I'm being recorded. It's like Five Man Acoustical Jam. I forgot we even had a 24 track mobile truck and five cameras for back in the MTV days. I forgot all about that. I like not knowing I'm recording. That way, you just get what we're putting out every night. 
I, I, I'm the, I think I'm the same type of person. I wouldn't want to know. Just do it, keep me out of the loop, no. and then tell me afterwards. Hey, it was a great show. And by the way, we recorded video and audio. <laughs> See, and, and I'm better off. The, the guys already know. JK don't even know I'm recording it because I don't play to the camera. To this day, I... I just apologized the other night we played here at Thunder Valley at home. Great show. And I told the, the cameraman that I know, and I said, I'm sorry I don't play the camera. I see a camera when I'm singing, and I turn the other way. I don't know what it is in me. Because I'm not. I'm there to try to sing and remember all the words and hit the notes. I'm not thinking about visual, but they like that, yeah. the photographer. So yes. I said, I'm sorry I don't play the camera. He goes, no, that's great, Jeff, because... My theory is, if you want to capture a picture of me, capture it while I'm right in the middle, just right, right knee deep. I, I do photography too, and I've shot a lot of your shows from when you opened up a Def Leppard in 2015, Marshtown, New Jersey, 2019, and I got some killer shots of you in action. So yeah, I never looked That's at it great. that way, but just great shots, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. You know, um, Time to Rock and Cold Blue Steel are newer songs. They were released as singles in yes. 2022. Was it important to get these songs on this physical release and get them out for real? Well, actually, these days are like, what, I, from what I understand, are like back in the 30s, 40s, 50s where they can just release a, a 45 record mm -hmm. and have a B-side. Mm -hmm. And they used to, a lot of artists used to just put like you know Hank Williams who recorded live on the, on the air uh, for whatever the name of the radio station was and he would just record it live and hit number one singles but it was just live they recorded it but what I'm getting at is back then the guys were explaining to me they go today Jeff download which means with a whatever phone iPhone Samsung you can release a track without releasing a whole record mm -hmm. we've always been AOR uh, album oriented rock mm -hmm. where you put on you know you enjoy the whole record well now you can release singles with downloading or whatever yep so the first song after COVID hit I didn't want to write I didn't have nothing to write about We're going through 18 months nothing just the whole bottom of the barrel dropped out and Frank says why don't you come up to this place up at Cameron Park it's 20-25 minutes away and he goes just come up bro we'll just hang out and next you know we wrote an idea for a song that we're going to put out later this year wow. and it's what I had to get off my chest before I could write and then once we did that which we're working on it's going to come out later this year I think is the plan and uh, so me and Frank put together Cold Blue Seal mm -hmm. and then uh, and then because you know all these all this people going in movies theaters with guns but I I didn't like writing about that but that's what was going on yes. and it's still going on at this time yes agreed so it's hard for me to look at the audience when we play it live and, and look at them because I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed that that's where things are at but then we put out here a while back Time to Rock which is talking about let all that go for the hour and a half and just come into the show and just just lose your mind for an hour and a half take your mind off all the everyday grind right awesome I agree that's what that song's about and yeah. so nowadays evidently you can release singles and not have to release a whole record yeah but, but we are planning on making another record because see Tesla likes to write songs yes we're not one of these bands that says we can just go to retirement just playing songs from you know all our records right yep but we still love to write songs and that's what we love so that's why we yeah so that's why we're releasing these singles on everybody's telephone Are you, do you think these two songs will be on the next album mm, I can't say that hopefully we'll be able to write 12 songs and already say, well, we already released some songs. You already have those. Yeah. That's my way of thinking is, oh, we already got those two songs. They've already been released. Why put them on a record? That means you only got to write 10. I'd rather see us write 12 new songs. Awesome. I get it. I get it. You know, Tesla is a, a tremendous live band, and you're, you're known for your live act. Do you like the studio version of those two songs better, or the, do you like the live version of those two songs better? Well, here's the deal, Robert. When I write... When them guys give me the music, and then and then and then once I 
approach, like with my lyrics, then we start moving things around and oh, do that bridge here and go here and do that mark twice instead of four times. Uh, but um, when when I I know my, for for my part, say when I write, I say, all right. When I go in to sing a song, I go and I go, all right, Frank. You you got four overdubs here on the song. What what are you gonna play for the opening? What are you gonna play for the first verse? What are you gonna play for the chorus? What are you gonna play for the second verse? What are you gonna play for the chorus? What are you gonna play for the bridge? And I say, okay, I want that in my left ear because that's stage left. Dave, what are you gonna play when we play live? You've got four different tracks to pick from. He goes, I think I'm gonna go from this part on the verse, and then go to this part on the bridge, and then go to this part. Of course, I go, that's what I want my right ear. And I want the kick, snare, and the bass up the middle, and my voice up the middle, because I want to sing to what eventually we're going to be playing live. Right. So I very much think about we're going to play it live. Because if things go well and you put out a song and it works well, you're going to be playing it live. That's the whole idea about it, you know? Yeah. That's, that's fascinating. I didn't know you did that. That's really fascinating. Yeah, so the, I go to bare minimum because that's what I'm going to hear live in my in-ears. And then they can soup it all up and do other things and stuff. But we, when we play live, we don't roll no tape. We don't roll no uh, Pro Tools or nothing. I know. When you see us live, we either sound good and we're doing it or we have an off night and we're doing it. <laughs> I, every time never, I've heard you, it's been a great night. So, yeah. We never roll tape. And now they say, well, it's not really tape anymore, Jeff. It's a computer. And I go, well, either way, we don't do none of that. Good for you. Good for you. As, as, as I don't think you should, anybody should. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. yeah. Hey, like we say on all our records, uh, no machines. And then when we did the... Uh, uh, five man acoustic jam, which which was a slew because we were on tour with Motley Crue. It's called All Wood. <laughs> so that was our motto. We went from no machines to all wood. Awesome. Meaning acoustics. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, we like to keep it real, Robert. You know, there was only, I believe, nine songs on this album, yet your shows are typically 13, 15 songs long. Um, what was the reason for trimming it back? And not putting, well, not doing everything, you know, like double. What was the question again? Sure. Typically, your shows are 13, 15 songs for the hour and a half, like you mentioned, but there's only nine About songs 16. on the album. Yeah. Well, because I think they call it an EP or something. I don't know. You got to have like eight to have an EP. I don't know. Yeah. Them guys know those answers. I don't know. Yeah. There's some good songs that were, you know, I assumed were left off, so it would have been... You know what it is, Robert? I think it's just for our, especially our hardcore fans, to have something new to fresh to put in their smart. player. That's you know? smart, yeah. And every time I've seen you guys, just from year to year, uh, show to show, you guys mix up the set list pretty nice, where it's like, oh, I never heard that them do that one live. How much flexibility do you have to um, change a, a set list every night or every well, the tour? Well, is... Uh, set list because you've got staple songs. You okay. can't go to the Tesla show without here. Modern Day Cowboy, Signs, Love Song, uh, What You Give, uh, Heaven's Trail. So we have about 12 staple songs, so that leaves us open for four songs. Sometimes we'll say two of them will play. We haven't played for four months. Uh, uh, and now let's play it again, and then we'll call what we call a couple rabbits out of the hat, <laughs> like, you know, before my eyes, or, or yes. you know, or, or something that it's like we call it pull the rabbit out of the hat. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, uh, lists are tough. <laughs> they you, are because you got the twelve staple songs, and you only get to play sixteen. That gives you four songs to play with. Do you do that before every show, or is it pretty much worked out? Before in every advance? show, the set list. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Frank, kind of go, go around going, how about this, this, and that? And they'll go, hey, hang on. And then sometimes when they've asked me, I go, how about this year, this, there? And they'll go, no, I have to change my guitar right there and then change it back for that song. So I just let them guys do it. Tell them you don't know, remember the words to their songs. So that make it, that'll call it even, right? <laughs> but, uh, and then I have cheat sheets. I'll say, type me up a cheat sheet and like, like 32 fonts so I can read it from the yeah. ground. That's awesome. That's awesome. You, yeah. did, you did the Aerosmith song, SOS. Um, was that played live at that show also? Uh, I believe so, yes. Yeah, wow. Absolutely. I think that's the whole idea behind it. That was fantastic. You did a tremendous job on that. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. 
you were channeling you were channeling Steven Tyler on that. So well done. Oh, hey, Steven Tyler was a very big influence. My first concert was Stan Green Number Three Open Coliseum, 1978. Van Halen opened the show. Mm-hmm. ACDC with Bon Scott. That's my biggest inspiration of all. Wow. He was in jeans and tennis shoes and a shirt, and Malcolm Young holding that board down with that rhythm. I know Angus does all the fancy guitar work, and he's on the floor and all that. But Malcolm, uh, uh, Malcolm and Bon Scott. So every night I step on stage, I go Bon F and Scott. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, um, when we spoke in 2020, as I mentioned, for the five-man London Jam, you mentioned that shock was a different approach to writing and recording. And you kind of looked back, you kind of were looking forward to getting back to some basics in lyric writing and melody writing. Um, are you doing no. that for this upcoming album? No, shock was done to lead uh, for, for uh, 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 Phil Collin, which was fun to do, and he... Just like working with Mutt Lang, he called all the shots. We just followed his lead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But are you looking forward to getting back on the new album, back to, you know, being more involved in the lyric writing, the melody writing, and doing it all? Oh, well, I always write the lyrics. Only for shock did, did I do that, because the, the deal was we just follow Phil's lead. Okay, got it. All right, yeah. And the only song I wrote off that, the words and the melody, was Forever Loving You. Yes, great song. Yep. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I get it. You know, um, I also have to wonder, um, during the downtime with COVID, were you, you know, with countless years of constantly touring um, and having 18 months of, you know, nothing to do, was that kind of a good feeling to you? Or were you, are you like a restless spirit that wasn't oh, able to relax? I could not write during COVID. It was sad. Wow. People go, you got all the time in the world. And I go, I know, but I'm, I'm not liking how things are going and I have nothing to write about. So... A uh, song we're going to put out later, uh, like I said, is the song that I had to write with Frank uh, just to get it off my chest. Yeah. Did you? And, that, and, and we're going to put it out later this year, and then then I could get back to start writing stuff like Gold Blue Seal, Time to Rock, and other songs. Yeah. Are you a restless spirit that can't sit still when you're not on tour, or are you? Am like- I a restless spirit that can't sit still when I'm off the road? I wouldn't call it rest of spirit. I'm just a go-getter. Yeah. I'm just a go-getter. And right now, uh, I got another interview here in about five minutes. Okay. But after that, guess what I'm going to do? What? Go dirt bike riding. That's right. That's pretty cool, dude. That's great. Be careful. careful. That's right. All right. Be careful. I know, but when in doubt, gas it. (laughs) But I like to ride my dirt bike because it's just like, (laughs) and, and takes my mind off everything. Uh... And, and and except for going on over the mountain cliff, I always keep my mind on that. But I like to write that, and that's what I well, I I, can't, I write songs, but it's not about being on the, in the saddle out there with the dirt bike handlebars. It just makes me forget about everything. Good for you. Good for you. Well, listen, I want to thank you so much for your time and full throttle it and be safe. Okay. Thanks, Robert. Appreciate your time too, buddy. All right, I look forward to seeing you guys when you play uh, Pennsylvania coming up this summer. Thanks, Robert. Bye bye.